Hey guys, this is my new tutorial covering a couple new nodes that were added in the 2.5 series of Redshift. They're pretty exciting new nodes. So the first one we're going to be covering is the Triplanar node, which lets you do a lot of cool procedural shading and blending. The next new node that was added was the color layer. So it's a nicer compositing to blend between textures and layer up stuff type of a node rather than the standard Maya node that we have, the layer texture node. And then also a new color correct node, which lets you easily adjust hue and saturation, that type of stuff. And um, before I go into this tutorial, I just want to mention that I have made a Patreon. And so here, here it is. I just made it. And it's patreon.com, The Art of Saul. And the reason why I made this is just so I can make some more in-depth tutorials. So my first video is going to be actually Redshift Look Dev in Houdini. And we're going to be covering plant shading. And this is going to be a project-based uh, Patreon. So we're going to be building assets and eventually assembling a full scene. And, you know, if you guys want to help pledge and check out some of these cool tutorials, you know, That'd be great. I appreciate it. And if you guys just want to help, this will help me make more of these free YouTube videos for people to look at. And so, yeah, let's get uh, started on this tutorial. So first things first, we just have our basic little shader ball model. And we just have a standard Redshift material. Nothing, Nothing's going on here yet. And so let's fire up the IPR. And so right now... <clears throat> We're gonna fir we're, the first node we'll check out is the uh, new color layer. So let's make that. And so the new color layer node comes with a ton of options. I mean, it's it's got inputs and outputs for just just about anything you can imagine. And it's it's a great node. It's got it's got a lot. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it has all these blend mode options. So you have average, add, subtract, multiply, difference, you know, the, the, the typical Photoshop stuff we're all, you know, used to. And so what this lets you do, in, in the earlier versions, you had to use this node, the layered texture, which is the, the standard Maya one. And it's just old, it's clunky, it's slow. It doesn't have as many options. It just all around sucks. And so they added this new Redshift-specific node. And there's actually an advanced check you can check on to turn on pre-multiply if your if your textures are pre-multiplied or not and so there's a lot of really cool things you can do so just to sum it up your base layer is your first layer so if we if we plug this in right now into the diffuse color and this will fit in whatever slot you want it doesn't only work in diffuse it could be diffuse roughness whatever right and so but um, color is the most obvious, so we'll use color. So now it's black because our base layer is black. So you could change this to fit whatever. Actually, let's turn off the layer one. So right now it's just the base layer. As you can see, it's you know it's changing colors and stuff. And so we'll we'll go with a, a nice dark gray to start with. And <clears throat> so how it works is each layer is basically adding up on top of your base. So you can add up to seven, well, if you include your base layer, there's eight total layers you can have. And so what's really neat about this, let's just turn it on. So right now we're gonna we're gonna blend this white on top. And so right now it's fully on, it's everywhere, right? So you have the option, there's this alpha slider. This lets you decrease basically the strength so if you turn it all the way to zero, it turns it off, 50%, you know, it, 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 it does that. The mask, this does the, the, the blending, basically, you could say. So you can go from zero also, and you could go all the way up to one, and anything in between. While the alpha, this is more like a, a straight cutout, like there is no... There's no in between. It's either on or it's off. So this is great for if you're um, you would pipe in like let's say you had a sticker on a bottle or something, and your alpha cutout. This is where you would plug it in. Your mask basically lets you add more um, masking alphaing between zero and one in between. So you could do some pretty neat effects. So 
just to you know show an example of that let's add a, a checker texture and we'll plug in the uh, out color R into the alpha of layer one and so let's just do that and then boom now we have instantly where the ch where the texture alpha is white and black you know it's cutting it out black white and so you can imagine this is really useful for like like I said stickers and stuff like that that you want to cut out perfectly sharp and so what's really cool now is we can actually take this a little further so let's make a noise and now with this noise texture we'll plug in R but this time we'll plug it into layer one mask and so what we'll get is a little variety see so now it's cutting away not just a solid black and white sharp cut but it's doing in between a gradient basically so let's let's zoom in and check out what it's doing and so now we have the sharp cutout from our checker because that's plugged into alpha but we also have a variable of gradient opacity basically because we have the noise plugged into mask and so you can layer this up different ways you know additively and multiplicatively and so you could add another layer so let's turn on another layer now we'll do something I don't know let's do some weird let's do a red and this time we'll control this using something fun like a the redshift curvature node so now we've got the curvature node and we'll plug that in to let's try layer twos where is it at the uh, layer two mask and so now this red is only being applied onto those those edges and then you know we if you want to learn about the curvature node I have another separate tutorial covering that and so you can do convex concave and um, yeah you know the, the the convex and concave and all that it's the edges or the inside of the surface and so you could control how much the radius on it and do a lot of really cool stuff with this so now it's kind of blending it out and yeah you guys get the picture but the idea is basically that with these you can input anything into these so you can input in your color slot a texture you can input into your alpha or your mask texture maps that you have you know from whatever texture painting app or or whatever but you can also plug in procedurals so you could pr plug in procedural noises you know the curvature stuff like that which is really neat so this 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 makes for some really cool neat features that you can you can really layer up and get creative and and make really nice procedural stuff with the new um, color layer so that's that let's uh, let's actually change the color so we, let's disable this and change the color to something to that red so we can better see what's going on and let's uh, increase the roughness a little bit just uh, get a little get more of an idea of what's going on and so okay cool now we've got this this checkered pattern with a little bit of variation and noise and stuff but let's say you're like oh I don't I don't like this red you know or you have a texture that you kinda wanna tweak well with the the new node before in Maya you had to use the remap nodes like remap HSV and while these are you know if you know how to use these these are still pretty cool because they have curves and um, I've actually requested the the redshift devs to add curves to this new node hopefully so this will never have to use this again but um, the new node is color correct and so there the redshift color correction so this node has the input gamma contrast hue saturation and levels so let's plug in 
this and plug out the output back into our material. And so let's, uh, I don't know, let's increase the contrast. Let's change the hue. See, you could, you could get really crazy with this. And so, like I said, right now, the node doesn't have curves. Hopefully, the Redshift devs can add curves to each of these options, so that way you could really target your texture and, and manipulate it. So you can, you know, you could do really awesome stuff with this node, and it's really quick, fast to just adjust your textures or your procedural um, shading, and just to get it to, you know, get that look you wanted. And um, so, yeah, that covers these two really simple but effective and powerful new nodes the redshift color layer to layer up all the <clears throat> textures and, and colors you want keep in mind this node does not replace the blend shader so the redshift uh, material blender you still you need to use this if you're going to blend multiple shaders together so if you're gonna blend like a redshift material on top of a glass material and mix it with something else you know you're still going to be using this 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 new node color layer does not replace the material blender to blend shaders you still want to use the material blender this new uh, redshift color layer only works for textures colors stuff like that and the redshift color correction it color corrects pretty much any any kind of input so you know, uh, black and white alphas, colors, whatever you could adjust with the new Redshift color correction node. And so let's uh, delete all this now and get back to our, our base. And so those are two really cool and exciting nodes, but one really, really cool and powerful node that a lot of people have been requesting for a long time, and we finally got it, is the triplanar node. And so the Redshift triplanar what it does is let's uh, do an out, uh, output into the diffuse. The triplanar basically allows you to blend on different axes between colors or textures. So to to best explain this and show it to you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just show you what it does. So right now we have image X, image X alpha, image Y, image Y alpha, image Z, image Z alpha. So to think of these, the X, Y, Z, you got to think of it just like you would in Maya, you know, X, Y, and Z. So Y up and down, X, you know, back, um, in width, and then Z into depth, into Z space. And so what you can do with this, which is really cool, is you can adjust and blend between all of them. And so this lets you do some amazing procedural stuff. So let's uh, increase the blend. And this object is really big, so I think I'm going to have to really increase the blend amounts, the blend curve, or actually the scale. Let's try 5. Nope. Offset, projection space, world. Okay. I'm going to... Let's see. Since this object is huge... And, it, and it's relative to your scene. I think I'm going to have to really crank up some of these values because, or well, let's see, let's, let's try to just shrink this down. Let's group it, shrink it down a lot, and hopefully that'll solve our problems. So now we're, we're at a more realistic scene scale. And um, so the this actual the uh, shader ball and asset they actually come from Cinema 4D, and so the scale's different in Maya and Cinema 4D. So that's why the Maya grid is way down here, and that shader ball was actually really huge. And um, okay, now that we've got that there, let's uh, try this again. Huh? Strange. It's not wanting to to do what it wants to do weird okay that's that's <laughs> not supposed to happen let's uh let's build a new cube 
Maybe there's something weird going on with the shader ball. And let's just hide the shader ball for now. And use this cube. And let's just assign the material to it. So existing material, wrenches material too. Okay. And huh. Very strange. I don't know why. Oh God. <laughs> I'm major mistake. See, see, guys, I make mistakes also. <laughs> I totally forgot. Let's we could turn off the cube actually. <laughs> Silly mistake. So what I didn't I forgot they added this recently, and I totally forgot this checkbox. It says same image on each axis. So right now it's projecting the same thing everywhere, which is the same red. So let's uncheck that, and boom, there we go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that that makes a lot more sense. So let's zoom out. Let's make the shader ball bigger again. Okay, so basically to understand what, what's going on is the triplanar node is blending on each axis. So, and you could, ch so right now, if you think of it, let's, uh, Let's make them all black, just so you can kind of see what's going on first better. So, image X, if I increase this, you're going to see how on the X axis of the object, because it's in proje the projection space is object space right now. So if you were to s you select the object, oh, red X, and that's why it's projecting from that side. If you can change this to world space and it'll adjust it to match the world space of the object. As you can see, see how it, it changes the direction. And uh, reference, I believe you can tie it to something else and connect it so that it's following the reference object. I don't, I've never actually used this so I can't tell you exactly what it what it does. I'd have to figure that out. But most of the time, people just use object space. And so, let's turn this back off. So now if we turn on image Y, you'll see that it's projecting from above. Let's turn that off. And image Z, now it's projecting from Z space. So, the idea basically behind this, and you could do, and th this node works with everything, roughness, bump, whatever. And so the idea behind it is that basically now I can blend between things.